All right, so today we're casting a line out, right? And we're going to reel in some serious knowledge about trolling as a fishing technique. I like it. I like it. It's all about, from what I understand, potentially landing some really impressive catches. Big, big fish we're talking. So, uh, you know, we're going to do a deep dive here. Uh, what are the essentials? If somebody's interested in trolling, what do they need to know? Well, you know, I think one of the things that's really appealing about trolling is, in a way, it's a very simple, straightforward approach. Okay. Really, at the heart of it, you're trying to mimic what happens naturally, right? Yeah. Fish are attracted to movement. Mm. They're looking for prey. And so the idea with trolling is you're dragging some kind of bait behind a slow-moving boat. Okay. And that gives the impression that, hey, here's an easy meal. That makes sense. You're not waiting for the fish to find your bait. You're bringing your bait to the fish. You're covering more ground. Yeah, you're covering more ground. Absolutely. Instead of just casting in one place or, you know, however you want to think about it. Exactly. You're increasing your odds by covering more territory. Now, when it comes to bait, because you mentioned that that's the thing that you're dragging, what are some of the, like, go-to options for trolling? So you've got a lot of options when it comes to trolling bait, and I think that's part of what makes it interesting, right? You oh. can go with a more natural approach, which is live bait. Okay, so you're using, like, smaller fish. Smaller fish, exactly. Something that's already part of the ecosystem. Right. The other option, of course, is artificial lures. Right. These are designed to mimic, whether it's in appearance or in movement. Right. You know, and... they're trying to trigger that instinctive feeding response. Okay, so it's almost like tailoring what you're using to the specific fish you're hoping to catch. Precisely. And I think that's why trolling can be so effective for a wide range of species. Mm. You mentioned covering more ground, and I think that's another really key aspect of it, right? Okay. It's not just about, you know, dragging something through the water haphazardly. Right. You need that slow, controlled movement of the boat, and then the depth at which you're trolling is also crucial. So you're almost casting a wider net, so to speak. Yeah. Now, when we're talking about trolling and maybe we're aiming for some bigger fish, what kind of catches, what are we talking about here? Right. So because you're covering more ground, you're often fishing deeper depths when you're trolling, you're more likely to encounter larger pelagic fish. So we're talking about things like tuna, salmon, marlin. Okay. These are fish that are constantly on the move, out in the open ocean searching for food. Wow. <laughs> Those are some trophy fish, I can only imagine. <laughs> like reeling in a marlin, that takes some muscle. Yeah. What about the gear? What kind of gear would you recommend for someone, maybe just starting out with trolling? We're talking about bigger fish here, right? Right, and you're absolutely right. You need the right equipment to handle these powerful fish. Okay. So that means sturdy rods. It means heavy-duty reels. We're talking about big game fishing here. Okay. The rod needs to be able to withstand the force of that fish pulling on the line, and the reel needs to have enough line capacity and drag to tire the fish out. Makes total sense. Now, you'd mentioned earlier using sonar and GPS. I'm curious, how have these technologies kind of changed the game for trolling? It's pretty remarkable when you think about it, right? Oh, We're talking yeah. about being able to see beneath the surface of the water. Wow. Sonar allows you to do that. It sends out sound waves, and those waves bounce back, and that creates a visual representation of what's down there. Oh, wow. So you're seeing the depth contours, you're seeing underwater structures, and most importantly, you're seeing schools of fish. That's incredible. So it's like having like x-ray vision for the water, essentially. That's a great way to put it. And you can use that in conjunction with your GPS then? Absolutely. So you identify a promising area using your sonar. You can mark that spot with your GPS. And then as you're trolling, you can track your boat's movement. Wow. You know, you're presenting your bait effectively. That's really incredible how that technology has kind of revolutionized it in a way. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's made it more efficient. It's definitely increased your chances of success. So to kind of like wrap things up here, it seems like trolling is like a really, really effective fishing technique, especially if you're seeking those larger fish. You know, like we talked about, it's efficient. You can get multiple catches. You can target specific species. Are there any downsides? Well, you know, it's not the cheapest fishing trip. It is an investment. Okay. You need a boat that's equipped for trolling. You've got specialized rods and reels, and you're covering more ground, so you're using more fuel. So there are definitely some cost considerations to take into account. Absolutely. So it's a trade-off. Right. Greater potential rewards often come with a greater investment up front. First. But, I mean, for a lot of anglers, right, the thrill of the catch, mm -hmm. the excitement of the pursuit, 
mean, that's kind of what makes it all worthwhile. It's that passion for the sport that I think leads us to think about the impact that it has. Okay. I mean, we're talking about an activity that depends on a healthy environment. Of course, yeah. Sustainability is a crucial factor to consider. Right. As with anything that involves, you know, natural resources, we want to make sure that we're doing it responsibly. Exactly. So as you delve deeper into the world of trolling, think about the ecological aspects. Right. Practices like catch and release, mm. responsible fishing quotas, even the choices you make about your gear. Oh, interesting. All these things play a role. How do they contribute to ensuring the long-term health of fish populations and the ecosystems that they inhabit? These are really important considerations for any angler. For sure. For sure.